Last night, the Sox belted and walked their way to victory, snapping a seven-game losing streak here on the south side. And today, with a rubber match on the line, Johnny Danks looks to strut his stuff against the Royal Pains in the behind. His White Sox baseball, and it's next on Comcast Sportsnet. From the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Alexa Ramirez, Johnny Danks and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Billy Butler and the Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson. As we get set to bring you the finale of this three-game set, and it will be the rubber match. In the opener, Bruce Chen just dazzled our hitters, befuddled them once again. They won that game 5-1. to one. Then last night, Jake Peavy just continues to go stronger and stronger and stronger. He threw 115 pitches. He did give up four runs, but the bullpen got the job done. Jesse Crane and Chris Sale, we won that ball game 5-4. So this afternoon in the rubber match, Johnny Danks. John Danks going to the mound at 4-9, and nine, and last night, despite the fact that we did win, we didn't gain any ground because Cleveland and Detroit also won. Hopefully today we can eliminate that by winning and maybe getting a little help from some of our friends. So Johnny Danks has never lost to Kansas City, and that's a good sign because he's throwing the ball pretty well right now. That 4-9 record somewhat deceiving. Jeff Francis going to the mound for Kansas City, and at one point he was the ace of the staff of the Colorado Rockies. Those days are gone. He's 4-12. He's never beaten the Sox, but he throws a lot like Bruce Chin. So hopefully we'll wait back, take him to right field, and beat him 2-3. of three. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Xfinity on demand only from Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Take a look at the story of this year. We'll take a look at where the Sox line up in each and every one of the categories. Batting average, eighth. Runs per game, tenth. That's not good. Home run, seventh. That's just about in the middle of the pack. Average with runs in the scoring position. That one's been atrocious this year. The ERA's been pretty good, and the airs, well, second in the league, so the defense has been exceptional. That's one of the reasons why we're still trying to get to 500, and Johnny Danks can help us do that today. So let's take a look at how Ned Yost is going to line up his Kansas City Royals. Gordon leading it off, Giovatella hitting second, then it's Cabrera, the DH, and Melky's had a good series with Butler, Frank Poor, Meyer. Pena, Mustakas, and Escobar playing shortstop and hitting ninth. The degree defensive setup and how they'll line up behind Johnny Danks. Pierre Rios and Quentin left to right with Morel, Ramirez, Beckham, and Lillibridge. Tyler Flowers gets a nod once again behind the plate after hitting a home run last night. And the Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is John Danks. Looking for win number five. This is 20th start of the year. Surprisingly, left-handers are hitting him a little better than right-handers. Follow all of today's stats and info in real time with White Sox in-game live only on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by The Great Escape. So the Sox have thrown the ball around the infield. It's turned into a beautiful day after a rainy morning. We're set to play the third final and rubber game in the series, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Paul Carrollson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for the finale of this series. Johnny Danks. 2-0 lifetime against Kansas City, and he gets set to deliver the first pitch to Alex Gordon, the left fielder. And it is a strike. Gordon comes in hitting at 301, 14 homers and 58 driven in. Royals hitting at 267 with a 4.43 team ERA. 0 and 2 to count. Royals at home are 31 and 32, but on the road they're 19 and 38. Broke his bat, ate him up. Royals got him. Went out. The umpires for the game today. Mike Muchlinski behind the plate. Mike Winters, the crew chief, is at first. Mike Everett is at second. And Chris Guccione is at third. So here's Johnny Givatella. Givatella, 294, a home where he's driven in for. He's three for eight in this series. And he takes first pitch strike. I mentioned in the opening, Royals won game one five to one behind Sai Chin. Bruce Chin. It's going to be out of play. Then last night, Jake Peavy threw 115 pitches, gave up four runs, but Sox came up with two in the seventh to win it 5 4. Good jobs by Jesse Crane and Chris Sale picking up the save. There's Jeff Francis, who's going to start this game for Kansas City. He's had a tough year. He gone. Good heartbreaking slider down and in. After setting him up with the fastball, that pitch becomes unhittable. So John's delivered six pitches and thrown six strikes. And here is a Sox killer. Melky Cabrera comes in hitting in 312, 15 homers, 70 driven in. In this series, Cabrera's four for eight with a homer and three RBIs. And the count one and one. Cabrera this year against us hitting at 386, a couple of homers and eight RBIs. There's a strike. And lifetime, 335 with eight homers and 27 knocked in. Both of his home runs this year have come from the right side. And both of them have been hit very hard. The Jake Meister 
just getting stronger and stronger each and every outing. And that's foul back. There are the numbers from last night. He had one bad inning. And other than that, threw the ball pretty well. He did not go. Says Mike Winters. And a full count with Butler on deck. Rivera lifetime against Danks is three for 14. And the payoff pitch. He gone. One, two, three inning for Danks. Couple of strikeouts after half inning of play. It's Royals nothing and the good guys coming to bat. Right. For today, Pierre to lead it off with Ramirez and Canerco the DH once again. Then Quinton, Rios, Lillibridge, Flowers, Gordon Beckham, and Brett Morell playing third and hitting nine. The degree defensive setup and on the lineup behind Francis, Gordon, Meyer, and Frank Poor left to right. Mustakas, Escobar, Giovatola, and at first base, Billy Butler. Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher, Jeff Francis. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours as there's a breaking ball strike. Here comes in hitting at 285 with a homer and 33 driven in. The 1 1 pitch. And there's a soft line drive hit the Giovatella. Pierre has really been a catalyst through this little bit of resurgence. Pierre came in with a batting average that's creeping ever closer to 300. Well, Pierre is hitting 342 since June 26th. That's the fifth highest average in the American League behind Cabrera of Kansas City, Pedroia, Michael Young, and Yunel Escobar. Alexei fouls that out of play. And here at beautiful US Cellular Field, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gap, send 400 straight away center. That hit him. He didn't want to do that. And Hermie coming out to take a look at him, as is Ozzy. There's not a whole lot of meat on those bones of Alexi. That one got him right in the tricep on the left arm. Hermie's poking around, saying, Does it hurt here or there? How about there? Well, the best thing Alexi could have done would be just go to first base. Yeah, because as Hermie pokes it, 
Eventually, Alexi's going to say, okay, I'm okay. Let me get to first. Dr. Payne. What a guy. He's the best. So Alexi says he is okay. After going through that excruciating exam by Dr. Payne. <laughs> and here's Pauly. Pauly comes in on a 10 game hitting streak. He's hitting at 306, 27 homers, and 82 driven in. That game that Bruce Chen pitched where he went six innings, gave up just one run. That being on Friday night, he hit two. Quentin in the first. And Przinski in the third. There's a look at the man that we can't beat. Get him out of town. That's outside. Baltimore leading Detroit three to one that game in the top of the third at Oriole Park. They were leading five nothing yesterday and well lost it six five to the Tigers. One and one to count to Canerco. It's Jojo Reyes pitching for Baltimore. Doug Fister. Going for Detroit. And there's a base hit. So Alexei is going to make the turn. He will go into third. Nice piece of woodwork right there by Canerco. What new? Runners at the corners, one out, and that'll bring up Quinn. We talked at the beginning of the day. If a guy's going to do this, you've got to go the opposite field. Just wait back. This is a changeup. Just flicked it out over the head of Giovatola. And a chance to break through, which is always good. Quinn, just two for 14 lifetime off Francis. He's one for seven in this series, hitting at 259. Now feel slightly to the left as that pitch turns over and misses low and away. And there's a base hit. So Alexi will score. And it's one nothing Sox. That guy number 74 for Carlos Quentin. So the hit batsman comes back to haunt Francis. And the Sox break on top. It's yet another changeup. This ball is out of the strike zone. Carlos able to extend and just flick it through the left side. And here's Rios. Alex at 213, seven homers and 27 knocked in. That ball hit hard, but it's going to hang up for Gordon. High throw. Or else they may have gotten it. Meanwhile, a hang with him for Rios. Two down. And here's Lillibridge. Brent's looking for that fastball. Boy, he got one last night. And he hit the daylights out of it. It ended the seventh inning, but it could hardly be hit any harder. But he hit it right at Gordon. Now, Brent squared up a couple of them last evening. That single he had in the sixth inning was absolutely scalded. Just about as hard as he can hit a ball. One and over the count to Lillibridge. One and one.
And that's out of play right side. And right now, let's check out our picks to click. Tim and Joe, our director and the crew, went with Villa Bridge. Stone Point is going with Tyler Flowers and JJ and Tim Shura. And all the great folks down at Ditka. Ed Fernandez in the gang. We're going to go with Juan Pierre. Two on, two out, and a one-two count. And that's another souvenir. That ball hit hard deep. Gordon goes back, looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Three-run blast by Littlebridge. And it's a 4 nothing Sox lead. Hello. Went up looking for that fastball. Finally got that fastball. And after following a few off, the Ford home run replay is a fastball up and out over the plate and gone. So a big first inning. Capped off by Brent Lillibridge hitting a three run bomb. And Tyler Flowers stands in, takes a breaking ball strike. He was two for five in this series and last night. After the pitch, we'll show you. Last night he did this. At the time it was four to two. This is off Luke Hochaber. That made it four to three. And that's his first major league home run. One and two the count. And just off the plate. So a good way to start this ball game. And that's low. Ten home runs now for Brent Lillibridge in fairly limited action. He's really filled in nicely at first base. And there's a shot off the glove, so that's a base hit. And that'll bring up Beckham. Tyler Flowers continued to scald the ball. This one looked a little like a cutter, but didn't get in. Escobar thought he should have had a shot at it, but. And then when he even sticks in the glove, his head is pointing toward the left field corner. Gordon, 0 for 3 in the series, comes in hitting at 241. And that's low. And a nice play by Mustakas, who's got a gun. Gets it, takes the base hit away from Beckham, but Sox put a crooked number up on that board. We'll go to the second leading, 4-0.
Game set with the Indians right here at beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Sportsnet Central. White Sox Indians Tuesday at 7 only on your home for White Sox baseball. Comcast Sportsnet fans best friend. It'll be Butler, Francoeur, and Meyer. They want to send out a big White Sox hello and happy birthday to Martha Mossberger at the Lutheran home in Arlington Heights. She and her husband, John, have, they've been married 65 years. He's also a resident at the home. So happy birthday, Martha Mossberger. Big Sox fans. 65 years of marriage. That's awesome. Butler takes ball one. He is hitting 285, 14 homers and 65 driven in. Butler three for eight in this series with a homer. And he's knocked in four. That's out of play. Count evens at one. Billy Butler's had a very solid season. For a guy who is going to be a bigger home run hitter than he is now. He doesn't strike out a whole lot. And the count one and two. Billy's been around a while and he's just 25 years old. He gone. John's got a very good slider today. Used it to get Giovatella and now uses it to get Butler. He just buries this ball down and in. That is a one pitch from a left hander to a right handed hitter especially a strong right handed hitter. That is devastating. The slider down and in and you got to find a way to take it away from him. And you do that by backing off the plate. As Fran Coeur. Fouls it back. He's three for nine in the set. Well two guys that come to mind that had as good as it got with that particular pitch. Steve Carlton. And Ron Gidry. Back foot sliders, absolutely unhittable. Well, Mickey Lolich had a good one. Sparky Lowell had a, an outstanding one. Did he learn from Gidry? <laughs> As that pitch is just devastating. Gary Peters, former Sox left hander, had an outstanding slider down in the end. The only thing he tried to do, he tried to take your right kneecap off with it. He's the only pitcher that I ever used a, a basketball knee guard to hit against. Because I knew he was coming after that right kneecap. The one two. Had to go inside once again. Only that time was the fastball. Chris Getz. Former Sox second baseman. Relegated to the bench these days. He gone. Four strikeouts in a row for Danks. Well, I'm glad to see Getz not playing against us. He has played well against us and hit well against us this year. Well, Mitch Meyer takes the strike. And this is your chance to win an Ozzie Guillen autographed jersey by telling the White Sox what you think. Simply log on to your computer and take a quick survey. Answers are confidential. Visit WhiteSox.com slash survey. And you must complete that survey before today's game ends. Ozzie Guillen autographed jersey. Nice. And Ozzie certainly loves the fact that he's got four early runs. That have not happened too much. Nope. Got to give a big lift to Johnny Danks, who is the recipient of that largesse. Come back and get him. No walks. And there's ball four. So the first Kansas City base runner. And here's a switch hitting catcher. Brian Pena. Hitting at 257, three homers, 24 knocked in. A little better hitter from the left side, but he's spelling Perez, so he gets a chance to hit from the right side against Danks. Takes low ball one.
And that ball hit in the center field. That's a can of corn. And that'll retire the side. Nothing across after an inning and a half. Four nothing. White Sox. Back for a limited time at participating McDonald's for a dollar eighty nine. And a reminder you can join the Shy Sox mobile group by texting Comiskey, C O M I S K E Y, to 244769 for a chance to win $100 in Comiskey cash and four premium lower box T seats to the game on September 9th. Text Comiskey to 244769. Brent Morell. We'll lead it off. Sox sent eight men to the plate in the bottom of the first, scoring four times. Brent comes in 254, a couple of homers. He's driven in 22. Takes that curveball. Want to know the count. Turns that one over. The difference between Francis and Chen is that Francis doesn't have real good control yet. There's the strike. And while he's fighting his controls, a good time to add another run or two to that lead. Mustakis, he can throw some leather. He's got a terrific arm and looks like he really knows what he wants to do at third base. But swinging the bat so far for him has been a terrific mystery. Certainly against us, but against everybody else also. So here's Pierre. One hit a little soft line drive to second. And he's a little soft ground ball to Givatella. Two down. I just wish a whole lot of players would take a look at Juan's work ethic. Pay attention to when he gets to the ballpark. Pay attention to when he leaves the ballpark. Watch what he does while he's at the ballpark. Watch how much he puts into the game to get out of himself everything that he possibly can. Because nobody can outwork him. There's a strike. To Alexei. He started off that four run. First getting hit by a pitch on an 0 2 count. Hit him in the triceps. Bottom of the fourth in Baltimore still 3 1 Orioles over Detroit. It was a rain delay earlier. In Cleveland as they lead Minnesota 1 nothing. Out and around that one, and that's foul.
Usually what you like to do when a guy hits you is try to hit it right back up the middle. But Lexi has become a pull hitter. Checks it up. He did not go, says Mike Warner. And that is ball four. First walk issued by Francis, and that'll bring up Canerco, who singled in the right center. Francis does not have a good move to first base. And checking some other scores for you. Atlanta leading the Cubs 3 0 that game in the fourth. Down in Georgia, Pittsburgh leading Milwaukee 1 0. That's in the bottom of the second at Miller Park. Paulie takes first pitch strike. Paul's been prolific since the start of 2010. The most home runs you see Bautista by a wide margin over Pujols. And Paulie is sitting there in third place. And there's another base hit. So let's say. Made a hard turn pulled up. And with two out, two on, that'll bring up Quentin, who had an RBI single last day. It's another changeup. It's another pitch away, and instead of trying to pull it, well, he goes right back up the middle. Well, that's one reason he has all those home runs in the last two years. He's taking what they give him, not being greedy. And eventually a pitcher is going to get tired of watching him hit the ball to right center and up the middle and he's going to try to sneak the ball by him inside. Those are the ones that leave the ball. And then you can put it on the board. <laughs> Stay fair. Stay fair. Foul. It won't. Dead. Got off the end of the bat. Carlos who drove in his 74th run in the first inning bidding for at least one more. But this one hooks at the last instant. And that's going to be playable for Gordon. And foul ground makes a catch. That'll retire the side. So we have a mild two out threat. Can't score. We'll go to the third leading by four.
Sox with CSN's White Sox mobile alerts. Text CSN Sox to 29653 for breaking White Sox news, scores, insider reports, and more. Text CSN Sox to 29653. Moustakas. Bobbled. And it'll be an arrow. That's the first error this year committed by Lillibridge. He's been a master at all three positions in the outfield, and he's done a great job at first base, but this time he slides over. Does not come up far enough with the hop. And Moustakas is aboard. So here's Escobar. Fakes the bunt. Takes the ball. Escobar two for eight in the series. Hitting at 253 a couple of homers and 37 knocked in. We've seen him use the whole field. If you stay away he'll hit the ball to right right center. Excellent play coverage. And the count two and zero. Oh. Alex Gordon on deck. And there you see he prefers right field. Although. He uses every part of the field. He is however a difficult man to walk 20 walks in 419 at bats. He was all over that one underneath it. And there's a strike to even account at two. Sox with an off day tomorrow. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it'll be the Cleveland Indians coming to town. Some good pitching matchups in that one. All right. Back them up. Very good. Five, four, three. Gordon stays in long enough. Gets out of the way of the sliding Moustakas. And they get him by a half step. His foot is still in the air when the ball hits the glove. First pitch strike to Gordon, who ground it out to Morell. Oh, and to the count. Johnny's got real good stuff today. He keeps it in the zone. He's probably going to be in very good shape. Just off the plate. This one doesn't miss by much, but it's a good call by Muchlinski. Because it's tantalizing, but it's not a strike. Oh, nice pick right there. Johnny, get over there. He will. There was a good play by Lillibridge. And we'll go to the bottom of the third. It is still 4 nothing. Good guy.
The only player to have a five hit game in the World Series. You think about that for a bit? We'll get back to you a little later in the game. Alex Rios to lead off the bottom of the third. He's 0 for 1. He hit a rocket right to Gordon in left field. Takes that pitch downstairs. Besides, really scuffling at the plate this year. As Mustakas has got him. And that's out number one. But besides scuffling. When he did hit the ball hard, most of the time it's been at somebody. Really? When you're scuffling and not swinging it about well, but when you do hit it hard, it's right at somebody. That makes for a bad year. Early in the year, he came out of spring training swinging the bat just about as well as anybody and kept lining it at people. Then all of a sudden, like everybody does, you go into that long slump and it's tough to come out of it. So here's Lillibridge. Takes the curveball strike, and he's one for three, and here is the hit. Check Here's it. One for one. Our Xfinity high speed action replay is a rocket of a home run on a fastball. A three run job. To be him 10 for the year. Fouls that back. Curveball in the dirt. And every White Sox Friday home game is United Flyaway Friday. Each Friday home game, one lucky fan will have the chance to win two free round trip tickets to anywhere in the continental United States that United Airlines flies. United proud to fly the Chicago White Sox. We're happy to be with them. Mark Seipol, Sparky, and Mike Corgan. Got him. Two down. It was one of the few change-ups that Francis has used effectively because they've been missing more times than not away, and that time Brent expanded his strike zone and swung the pitch way, way out of the zone. There's Flowers, Tyler. He singled in the hole between third and short. There's that change-up. Turning it over like a screwball. Well, that's what Chen does. Twenty one to count. Gap out there in right center, just a small one. Another change. And the count two and two. Backs it up with the fastball. So a full count with two out. And Beckham on deck. And there's another base hit. That a boy, Tyler. Two for two, and this one keeps the inning alive. Three change ups in the same at bat. Not usually recommended unless you have a superlative one. Francis is, is good, but not great. And here's Beckham. Mustakas took a base hit away with him on a nice play at third. Nice pick by Pena as that ball sounded like it hit off the plate. Because it doesn't see when it does that to skip. And flatten out instead of bounce. Yeah. 
And the count 2 0. And there's a base hit in the right. That a boy. Gordon. So like last inning, two out, nobody on. We get a couple of guys on. Gordon takes that ball away. Hits to the vacated right side as Giovatella was playing pretty much up the middle. A chance for Brent Morrell to drive home a run. Brent still looking for his first hit in the series. He's 0 for 9. He went out to his counterpart, Mustakas, first trip. Ball hit hard, but foul. Baltimore leading Detroit four to one. That game in the bottom of the fifth at Camden Yards. One and one to count to Morrell. And that is right to Gipatella. So once again, we get a couple, we strand a pair. We have left five. We'll go to the fourth. It is still four nothing Sox. The fourth inning is brought to you by KFC. Feed four or more with the KFC 10-piece family feast. Just $20. Giovatella will lead it off here in the top of the fourth inning. He struck out on a good slider down and in from Johnny Danks. Four runs on seven hits, one error for our guys. No runs, no hits, and no errors for their guys. In the LG Skyline Club seats. One and one to count. Cues it. And it's a ball and two strikes. Good change up for Danks, who is. Used both sides of the plate. Very rarely today has he used the middle of the plate.
Givatella, 5'8, 185 pounds out of Harahan, Louisiana. And that's shanked. Givatella, 293 minor league hitter. In his three years. And a full count. Melky Cabrera on deck. And that's not going to be playable. Still a rain delay in Cleveland with the Indians leading Minnesota 1 0. That game in the top of the third inning. And there's the dreaded leadoff walk. Second baseball on balls issued by Danks. Here's Cabrera. He struck out. Swinging on a 3 2 fastball. Can't get that one. Pops him up on a change up. Alex is there. One down. Here's our United Airlines leaders of the game, and it is Billy Butler. 24 runs batted in since July 25th, and that tops the major leagues in that department. Butler struck out on the slider his first trip. There he goes. He got too big a jump. He was off on first move. So Kansas City that depends on running. Steals its 119th base of the year. They haven't had a chance to do too much of that because they haven't had a hit yet. Just one off the league lead in that department coming into the day. Yankees had 119. And a count two and one. Plus well, Kansas City tied for third in the league in hitting at 267. And home plate jumping around on Johnny Danks here in the top of the fourth. Butler against us in his career has been a good crip hitter. This is a bad pitch right there. The change up by Crip, I mean 2031. He was so geared up for the fastball when he saw the ball wasn't going to break. He went after it, but that ball was a good six inches off the outside corner. It was a straight change. And that is going to be. High into the seats down the right field area. So the count hangs at 
Three balls, two strikes to the 25 year old first baseman, D.H. He gone. High changeup. Dunn is featuring the strikeout today. His stuff has been very crisp. He's used the slider. He's used the fastball. He's used the slider again. And the fastball. And the last one, he just uses the changeup. Alexei got him. So Frank Kerr's retired. He pitches over the leadoff walk. And after three and a half, it is four nothing White Sox. The only player to have a five hit game in the World Series. And the answer, none other than Paul Molitor. October 12th, 1982, game one against St. Louis. That's when they defeated the Baltimore Orioles. Don Sutton against Jim Palmer the last day of the season after losing the first three straight games in Baltimore. It was Harvey's Wallbangers. It's the bottom of the fourth inning here, and it is four seven and one for us. No runs, no hits, and no errors for them. Juan Pierre twice has gone out to Giovatella, once with a soft little line drive, the other with a soft little ground ball. Corners in close, and stock is on the grass. Takes the bun and takes the strike to even the count of one. Now feel very short, swung around to the left. Here's our AT&T U-verse multi-view. Center field shot of Juan. Gets it by him. Givatello's got to shovel it over. And it'll be a base hit. I like the behind the back flip. But at that point, you have zero chance of getting Juan Pierre on a perfect butt. As soon as he got it by Francis, that was about it. First three months, Juan really just had no success in his bunting game. Now it's starting to come around. It's not from lack of effort. He's out there every day early doing the same thing. Pushing him, dragging, pushing him, dragging. All butts. There is Alexei. He was hit by a pitch and he's walked. Bottom of the eighth in Toronto. Angels leading the Blue Jays 4 3. Baltimore now leading the Tigers 6 to 1. 
That's in the bottom of the sixth. Doug Fister starts, and he's still out on the bump for Detroit. There's a strike. Big series coming up on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday against the Tribes. So make your plans to be with us here at USA Ella Field. They're going to run the three best they have against us and Jimenez, Carmona, and Masterson. We're going to run some good ones against him as well and Floyd, Burley, and Umber. Then next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it'll be the Texas Rangers coming to town. Two and one to count to Alexei. One. Pretty good lead. And the outfield spread out as Francis. When the guy's got to move like that. That's a bad move. It just helps and reinforces the base runner. And what kind of lead he can get. The only way he's going to get a guy is on first move. As that ball is hit hard but foul. Seen a lot of pitchers with moves like Francis, not real good moves. Just not show it to the hitter. They'll just hold, what, the, they'll hold the baseball. That's what they should do. And they'll hold the baseball and they'll look over there and they'll step off the mound. They'll hold the baseball. Trying to get you to believe that they're hiding a better one than they really have. That used to be taught. Yeah. Guys with bad moves don't throw over. Just hold it. That's the same thing for a base runner as it is for a hitter on 2-0-3-1 with a one pitch pitcher. Back to the middle and into center field. So one. He's going to make the turn. Here's a throw by Meyer. Not a good throw at all. And Alexei in the second. Good base running. Good hustle on both parts. Ducks on the pun. Nobody out. Well, with Melky Cabrera in center field, you might think twice about doing that, but not with Mitch Meyer. And it's a real bad throw because it allows Ramirez to head into second base. Anytime you take yourself out of a double play situation, and you let the trailer advance 90 feet. You're not helping things as that ball comes rolling into third. So here's Polly. Polly is two for two with a run scored. Quentin on deck. Turns it over. Runs batted in the American League. Surprisingly, Curtis Granderson has taken over for Gonzalez. To share there in third and Pauly in fourth place, looking for more. And Muchlinski gives that one to Francis. One and one. Right side in. Escobar halfway. And count two and one. Pena wants to get something straight with Francis. Hey, 
Adcock loosening in the bullpen. Francis started this day without real good command. And it really hasn't come to him. Right from that first inning. Like every inning, he's at least had two men on. Oh, 6 6 South Paul. And Polly went fishing. And the 2 2 pitch. It's full. A lot of times in a situation like this, when you got your best hitter on the team up, two men on first base open, even though there's no outs, a lot of times that hitter will put some pressure on himself because he knows they're not going to give him anything good to hit. And he saw you saw him chase that one real bad change up, and he's been looking still for the fastball. And that's ball four. We didn't want any part of him because on the pitch tracks, every pitch was low and away. Well, there's a situation right there that if he gets a base hit, which he wasn't on those pitches, then it was it's, it was that's just insane almost. All you got to do is put up four. And McClure comes out, wants a word with Francis. Before this game completely gets away from him and the Royals, which could very well happen with nobody out here in the fourth inning, and the bases full of socks. Boy, Bob McClure was the guy we had trouble hitting. Whew. Man, well, there were a lot of teams that did. If you get on first base, you better not take a lead. Oh, you you, you go grab some bench. Crafty, with a lot of cunning and guile. So here's Quentin. He's one for two with a, an RBI. Socks packed with socks. Nobody out. Baltimore now leading seven to one. Still hitting in the bottom of the six over the Detroit, uh, the Tigers. Looks like Fister's taking a shellacking. Checks it up and takes ball one. That's high into center field. It's going to get the job done. Everybody's tagging except Paulie. He's tagging, but he's not going to go anywhere. So Pierre will score. Alexi into third. And it's a 5 nothing. Sox lead. Second run batted into the game. 75th of the year. And a towering sacrifice fly. So here's Rios. He is lined very hard to left field. And then he hit the ball hard down to third base. Mustakas got it. Curve ball drops it over for a strike. And that'll get the job done. Good at bat right there by Rios as Alexei will score. And it's 6 nothing. Two sacrifice flies in a row. RBI number 28. And what's turning into a very comfortable lead. With John Danks throwing the ball as well as he's thrown it. Here's Lodebridge. He got us on the board in a big way. 
We had a one nothing lead on the RBI single by Quentin in the first and then he hit a three run homer. A little bridge now with 10 homers and 21 knocked in. He throws him another fastball for a strike. His lap will be more. That's out of play right side. Two out. Pauly at first, one and two the count with two in here in the bottom of the fourth. Isle of Flowers. He's on deck. Tyler two for two today. If Brent can reach. And one of the few fastballs he's thrown in this inning. Change up. Can't get him. That'll be a base hit. Good effort by Mustakas. That's going to be it for Jeff Francis as Ned Yost comes strolling out of the dugout. He's going to go to Nate Adcock. As Francis has given up 10 hits. Six runs so far. It's a little tapper. Mustakas did whatever he could do, making the best play he could make, but couldn't get it there in time. All right, so Francis departs. Adcock. Nate Adcock comes on, and we'll be back. Is Nate Adcock, who's one and one is ERA, almost five and a quarter on for the 19th time. He inherits a couple of base runners at first and second in a game that's slowly slipping away from these Royals. He's going to look into Tyler Flowers, who's already got a couple of hits. Tyler got his average up to 333. That's being called up. Limited action. 
in his first major league homer last evening. First pitch strike. Just underneath it. High towering fly ball. And that'll do it for the Sox. Our Sox pick up a pair. We'll go to the fifth leading six zip. Six five three. If you're the 500th Dexter, you could win five five dollar foot long subways from Subway. So Johnny Danks has yet to give up a hit. Mitch Meyer steps in, looks at a fastball for a strike. He drew a walk in his only at bat. Ryan Paney in the on deck circle. Runs walked a pair, but that's been it. 21 the count to Meyer, who is a former number one draft pick. And count one and two. Six, ten, and one for our guys. No runs, no hits, no errors for their guys. Two and two the count. And it's three and two. Six strikeout snare for Danks. Shaves off the outside corner with this fastball. You can see where the seven appears. And it is indeed a strike. A pitcher's pitch to be sure. So here's Brian Pena takes the strike. He lined out to Rios in center. Just tuning in, Sox was four in the first. Highlighted by a big free run homer off the bat of Brent Lillaby. Added two more last inning.
And that is foul. Nice back in. Right over the top. Low throw. Lillibridge with the pick. Yes. Boy, Brent Lillibridge. Pick it, Wilson. Man. We had to wait back to see just exactly where that ball would hop. You can't just go out, set yourself, and expect the hop. Despite the fact that he has little or no experience at first base, he waits for the hop. And just barely gets him. Call by Mike Winters, and it was a good call because he was out. Boy, he's playing first base like a right-handed Mike Squires. He's doing a nice job. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. Talk to Spanky today. Yeah, Spanky could pick it over there as well. He's in town for a few days. That's foul back. Mustakas. Reached on an error his first trip. Mike Squires, one of the right hand men of Walt Jockety of the Cincinnati Reds. Mike's one of the best scouts in baseball. Now, Walt's one of the better GMs, and he picked a good one when he brought over Mike from St. Louis. Now, Walt is a terrific gentleman. Yeah. That's foul back. Cincinnati has fallen on some hard times. Pitching just hasn't been there. They're 210 back heading into play today. That's a good ball club. Cincinnati. As there is the base on balls to Mustakas. Third walk given up by Banks. Looks like we've got a good ball club, and we're five games back coming in. Personally, I'd rather be and chasing. Good pitching. I'd rather be chasing Detroit than Milwaukee. Escobar hit into a 5-4-3 double play. Takes low ball one. Pulls the string on him, had him off balance out in front. So one and one the count. And there's a strike on the corner. Feels lighted to the right with a two ball, two strike count. Escobar, the 24 year old, very talented shortstop. And a full count. Next pitch will be number 83 for Danks. And he walks him. To get two out and then walk Mustakas and walk Escobar to get to Alex Gordon. Gordon has grounded the third and he has grounded the first. Another good play by Lillibridge. That should be a can of corn for Juan Pierre. 
It is, and that'll retire the side. We're halfway home leading by a half a dozen. Bottom of the fifth inning, six, ten, and one for our guys. No runs, no hits, no errors for their guys. Beckham to lead it off. He's one for two. Breaking ball, going away. And the count two and zero. Oh. And once another big White Sox hello. Happy birthday, Big Sox fan John Fleeler. His lovely wife here at the game today. Three and zero the count. And there's one. Neighborhood pit. And a full count. Givatella. And one out. So here's Brent Morrell. Ran his 0 for 2 today. You can provide your guests with the ultimate baseball experience in the LG Skyline Club, United Scout Seats, Gold Coast Tickets Club, or Diamond Suites. There's a strike, premium seating. Well, they offer exclusive amenities and benefits. So for more information, call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com. Escobar control. Two down.
So here's one. He's one for three with a run scored. Pops that one up into short. Center field. That didn't take long. One, two, three, and we'll go to the sixth. Night. He hears the Sox take on the Rangers at 7 10 p.m. Enjoy Elvis Night and post game fireworks presented by Frito Lay. For tickets call 866 Sox Game or visit WhiteSox.com. First pitch strike to Giovatella. He has struck out and he has walked and also picked up his fourth stolen base. Owing to the count. 6 10 and 1 for us. No runs, no hits, no errors for them here in the top of the sixth inning. Pops him up, stay in here. Tyler over, ball coming back. He's there. And that is out number one. First pitch strike to Cabrera has struck out and popped up the center. Fastball still has plenty on it. That was at 93 on pitch number 89. And Johnny has had good stuff today. Better than he had last time out, but prior to that, two times he had real good stuff. That's in the right field. Can of corn. So two out and that'll bring up Butler who is 0 for 2 with two punch outs. First pitch strike. 
Just got the inside edge. Ate him up. Oh, what that's a, a fair terrible ball. break. Yep. That's a horrible way to give up your first hit. They're giving him E3, but that ball hit the bag. How do you give you him can. E3? No, that's the heel change. He, he's going to have to change that. Yeah. As much as you don't want him to. But watch it again. The ball scribs off the end of the bat. Littlebridge goes there to make the play. Didn't hit the bag. It hit no. something and took, took a bad hop. Took a terrible hop. Yep. Right there. Vancouver fouls it down. Vancouver struck out and granted to short. Yeah, that's a base hit. They changed it. Showing their displeasure as they put it up on the board. Meanwhile, that makes it academic. Moved. Down into the corner, so they're going to hold Butler on the double by Francoeur. They're just getting ready to say before Francoeur double. This is a funny game. Now we're going to be pulling for somebody to get a clean hit. <laughs> so that wouldn't be the thing. As long as they don't score. And now a big round of applause for Dax. Vancouver picks up his 34th double. Boy, this Kansas City team is a doubles machine. And time is called as Don Cooper coming out. Kansas City third in the league in doubles. We have 235. Red Sox leading with 248. Texas is next with 242. So 25,517 on a beautiful day here in the beautiful city. Meyer. Meyer has walked and he has struck out. Unless you're very careful after you lose that no hitter, taking it as deep as John did, Blair goes out of the balloon. You got to regroup and get that concentration back. And there's a base hit. It's going to score two. So two out, nobody on. That little bad hop single by Butler, the double by Francoeur, and now the single by Meyer. And the shutout is gone. RBI is five and six, and again, it's pretty tough. If they're losing the no hitter, to regain the concentration. That's my coupe went out. So here's Pena. He is 0 for 2. Bottom of the eighth inning in Baltimore. 8 1 Orioles over the Tigers. Right. Bottom of the tenth in Toronto as the Blue Jays came back and tied up the Angels at four.
And that's going to be foul. And a little bit later, Texas will be taking on the Oakland A's at the Coliseum. That's Harrison against Harden. And Harrison, 10 and 8 with a 3.06 ERA. That left hander's got some good stuff. Pretty good lead by Meyer. And the one two pitch. And that's going to drop right in front of Alex. So four consecutive hits. To send Don Cooper to make that call to the bullpen. Now this next pitch will be number 106. So here's Mustakas. He reached on an error and then he walked last inning. Takes it up high. And that has popped up. Alexei. So Mustakas. Now 0 for 33 against the Sox this year, but they come up with a pair. We'll go to the bottom of six, leading by four. You don't have to remember it to love it. Prices and participation may vary for a limited time, a la carte only. And also, you can visit the official online shop of the White Sox. You can browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, or authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source. Shop at WhiteSox.com. Bottom of the sixth inning in a 6 2 White Sox lead. It'll be Alexei, Canerco, and Quentin. 68 degrees at game time today, a radical departure of games past. Field about equidistant. Swung around to the left as Alexei chases the bad one. And that is going foul.
A reminder, great seats remain for all White Sox home games. Ticket starts at just 12 bucks a seat. And there are plenty of great matchups, promotional nights, and post-game fireworks still remain. So purchase your tickets by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Pops him up. Escobar. One out. Alexei. Now one for two with two runs scored. Here's Canerco. He's two for two with a run scored and a walk. Turns it over, thinks it too low. And that breaking ball outside. Three and nothing. Not going to give him a shot? No. One little shot? And that's ball four. That one wouldn't have mattered. He just had to get out of the way of that. So the perfect day continues for Paulie. Been on base all four times. A little housekeeping going on in front of the plate as the wind has kicked up. Quinton is one for two with two RBIs, an RBI single and a sacrifice fly. Takes it right there. Carlos only seven behind Pauly for the team lead and runs batted in. Only one to count. They're in the ninth inning now in Baltimore. Eight one Orioles over Detroit. Two and one. As we mentioned, off day tomorrow. Make your plans to be here Tuesday night. Gavin Floyd against Ubaldo Jimenez. Can't make it that game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Then on Wednesday, Mark Burley against Fausto Carmona. And that game will be over WCIU. And on Thursday, Philip Humber against Justin Masters. That game on Comcast Sportsnet. And after that, to conclude this nine game homestand, it will be the Texas Rangers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there's a foul ball. So, full count to Quentin. Cubs trying to come back. Atlanta now leading 5 4. A game in the bottom of the sixth down at Turner Field. Top of the seventh in Milwaukee, still 1 0 Pittsburgh. Not even close. So back to back walks. 
And here's Alex Rios, who's 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. He's hit the ball hard twice. Once was just called. Right to Alex Gordon in left field. Then he goes out there to try to settle down Adcock. His team has just gotten the pair, and now Bob McClure comes out. And we have a couple of postponements today. Washington and Philadelphia was postponed. Tampa Bay at New York, that was postponed. One final. Giants beat the Marlins 5 2 down in Florida. Vogel song 10 and 2 with a 2.47 ERA over Bolstad, who's 5 and 9. Giants trying to catch the Arizona Diamondback. They came in two back. They were a game and a half back pending the outcome of the Met. Diamondback game. That game in the desert. So here's Alex. Low ball one. And the Red Sox with a one game lead over the Yankees. Tampa Bay nine and a half back. That's top foul. Texas with a three and a half game lead. Check that a three game lead over the Angels. As that game is over, Toronto beat them in 10 5 4, so it's the three and a half game lead. Two and one to count to Rios. Phillies coming in with an eight and a half game lead over the Braves. And the Mets at 20 or oh, back. Washington 21 and Florida 22. And it's three and one. Hancock has really lost any conception of a release point. And those pitchers aren't even close, and that sends Pena to the mound once again. And Bob McClure to the phone. So the bullpen will get to work. Zadcock digging himself into a pretty big hole. Now feel spread out. And that's ball four. That will load them up. So, with one out, back to back to back walks to Denerico, Quentin, and Rios. Tiford loosening up in the bullpen. And here is Phillibridge, a three run homer, a strikeout, and an infield single. He's two for three. Starts him off with a breaking ball low and away. All right, you can look for it, get it right here, and make it be hittable, Brent. And the count 2 and 0. Oh. Brent's got pretty good hitting range on that fastball. Get you up and he can get you middle and he can get you down. Hey. 
And a count 3 and 0. Time to trim your nails when your pitcher can't get the ball over the plate and has walked three in a row and on the verge of walking in a run. There's one. that he took a little something off to get both of those over the plate. And it's down to Mustakas who's going to step on the bag and double him up at first. So from a 3-0 count, he gets the double play. And we'll go to the seventh leading 6-2. Post game live, watch highlights and get analysis from Chuck and Bill. Plus, plus, go to Ozzy's post game remarks. That's live. Don't miss Galaxy White Sox post game live immediately following the game on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. If Jason Fraser coming in the game, takes over for Johnny Danks, who went six innings, gave up a couple of runs on four hits, walked four fans six. Jason out for the 52nd time, the record even at twos. ERA 364. So he's going to face the bottom part of the order. And he's got a four run lead to work with. Shortstop. Alcides Escobar. Is it into a double play and drawn a walk. Want to know the count? Very young. Kansas City Ball Club. Oldest. Man on the field yesterday was 27. We get a couple of 29 year olds out there, and Meyer and Pena. A couple of 21 year olds played yesterday. Hosmer and Perez, the catcher. Two and one to count. This Kansas City team is going to have a big say in what happens because we play them 
a four game series in Kansas City in the middle of September and then entertain them for three here the second last series of the year but it's at home. Three and one to count no walks. Come on Jason. Pops him up. Into short right center. Alex making the call has the ball out number one. Fortunately he's a very tough man to walk. 20 of them all year. Alex Gordon stands in. He's 0 for 3. Alex hitting at 299 to go along with those 14 homers and 58 RBIs. He also has 36 doubles, 4 triples, 11 stolen bases, 54 extra base hits. And he got him. So says Mike Butchlinski. Got him with a breaking ball down and in. Got him on the back foot, and he did get him. So here's Giovatella. Johnny Giovatella, great name. He struck out, walked, and fouled out. The flowers. Gordon limping a little bit over there first. Takes that pitch downstairs, one and oh. Melky Cabrera on deck. Six ten and one for our Sox, two four and oh for their Royals. There's a strike to even the count at one. Tigers hitting in the top of the ninth. And they have scored four times. Still hitting. It is 8 5. Ball of war. That's low and away. Last couple times out, Jason's been getting behind the hitters. And that's popped up. Short right center. Quentin. So two down. Tigers have the bases loaded with two out. And four in, trailing by three. And Brennan Bosch at the plate. He's dangerous. And here's another guy who's dangerous. Melky Cabrera has struck out. He's popped up to center and going out to right. Takes first pitch strike. That ball hit hard, get foul. 
It won't. It's off the wall. So now they're going to hold Gordon to third on the double by Cabrera. And it'll bring up Butler. Fortunately, that ball wasn't a little higher because Melky rifled it against the wall. Got a fastball right down the middle and crushed it. So Bosch flies out. That ball game is over. Orioles won at 8-5. So as we speak, we now stand four and a half back of Detroit. Butler, one for three, a couple of strikeouts, an infield single, and a run scored. Pitch strike. That one almost got away. Nice. Tyler Flowers able to corral that one. Matt Thornton loosening in the pad. And the Cubs have come back to take a 6 5 lead over the Braves. That's in the bottom of the seventh for Turner Field. And the count two and one. Collins loosening in the pen. Big hack pulled himself out of the swing and the count evens at two. Finally, he accepts the sign. He gone. Big strikeout of Billy Butler. Seventh inning stretch. It is still a 6-2 White Sox lead.
And right-handers have really hurt him as compared to the lefty. Oh, and when the count, the Tyler Flowers who is two for three today. Tyler two for five last night with his first major league homer. Started off the end of the bat and just muscled it over that center field fence. He is a strong young man. And that's in the center field. Right on the track. One out. Dodge with four in the first, two in the fourth. And Johnny Danks had no hitters through five. Back, he had no hitters through five and two thirds and four consecutive hits. The Royals put a couple on the board. So six, ten, and one for us, two, five, and oh for them. And here's Beckham. He's one for three. Takes first pitch strike. Everett Tiefert, six feet tall, 165 pounds. Out of Alpharetta, Georgia. 27 year old Southpaw. And there's a base hit that a boy Gordon picks up his second hit he's two for four. Gordon gets a breaking ball away. This one doesn't break sharply it kind of rolls away from him and he takes it that way. The second hit to right field today. So here's Brent Morrell. He's 0 for 3. Breaking ball misses. Ball gets away. And Gordon is safe. Most likely a wild pitch. If it is, it'll be his first. And it is a wild pitch. And a reminder you can stop by the Comcast Fundamentals deck at USA Cellular Field for the ultimate game day experience. You can visit the Comcast dugout to see official White Sox equipment, take photos next to life size player cutouts, and listen to updates about the White Sox pitching staff on the Xfinity Voice dugout phone. All brought to you by the great folks at Comcast. And that's out of play. Pull the string and a count two and two. Still a rain delay in Cleveland. Game in the top of the third inning. They lead Minnesota 1 0. There's a shot caught. And another base hit of Bullet off the bat of Morrell. Brent Morrell bidding for his first hit. Not to be, Givatella robs him. Drops down to Juan Pierre. One is one for four with the run score. The strike with that one. Pick him up one.
Watch out. Feel real short. And you just ate him up inside, a little looper to Mustakas, and that'll do it. It is a 6 2 Sox lead going to the eighth. Owen for the ERA 379 on for the 46th time. Just been Danks, Fraser, and now Thornton. Trying to hold this four run lead and get out of here. First pitch strike, Jeff Francoeur, who is one for three, a double, and a run scored. And very quickly, 0 oh 2. That double was Frank Kors 34th. He has 15 homers, 34 doubles, 3 triples, and 19 stolen bases. It's been a good pickup for the Royals. But they need a little help out on the bump. And hangs at one and two. Outfield straight away. Fairly deep for Frank Gore. It does have some pretty decent power. He gone. Yes. Everything was away until that last pitch, and he threw it by him up and in. Meyer takes ball one. He's one for two at a two run single. And the count one and two.
Stops that breaking ball foul. As I mentioned, former number one pick, Royals have stuck with him, waiting for him to break out. He's got some talent. Just has not come to fruition as that ball hit into left field. So two down, that'll bring up Brian Pena, the switch hitting catcher. Brian Pena. He is one for three. Johnny Danks had a no hitter through five and two thirds. And a bad hop infield single by Butler. Double by Francoeur, a single by Meyer. That scored a pair, and then the single by Pena. Those are the four hits that they got in the sixth inning. Then they got one last inning, the double by Cabrera. Checks it up. One and one to count. You could tell pretty early in this one that Johnny Danks had very good stuff. And his team backed him up with an early six spot lead. Pena left with just the handle as the head of the bat flies out at Matt Thornton. And another hundred dollar bill just bit the dust. That's counting taxes. Leaves a little divot right in front of where Matt Thornton is. He just barely saw the bat of the corner of his eye at the last instant. <laughs> He's looking at the baseball, then realizing that that bat might be coming toward him. Two and two the count to the 29 year old catcher. You missed the first two games. They brought up a 21 year old receiver, Salvador Perez. 6'3, 244 pounds out of Valencia, Venezuela, and he looks like he's going to be a good one. He's got a gun. There he is. And he, for a rookie, looks like he does a couple of good things at the plate. He's got some power. And the 2 2 pitch. That's it. Come on, Matt, make him swing the bat. Make him hit his way on. And he does. So the count got him. And that'll bring up Mike Mostakis, who, as I mentioned, against us this year, he is 0 for 33. And he looks at strike one. And there's strike two. There he goes. Off the end of the bat. Beckham's got him. And now 0 for 34. We'll go to the bottom of the eight, still leading 6-2.
Co upcoming schedule. It's a day off tomorrow, and then three with the tribe, followed up by three with the Texas Rangers as they come to town. And that's the end of the homestand. Then another off day, and it's on to the Angels in Anaheim. That's a felt go upcoming schedule. It's the bottom of the eighth inning and a pitching change. Well, Kim Soria comes in. Normally, he is the closer of this team, but there's nothing to close today, so he needs an inning of work. And on for the 50th time. Alexei, one for two. He was hit by a pitch. He walked. And now he is two for three. Come on, boys. Let's get a couple more. There's Polly. Polly is two for two. Two singles, a run scored, and a couple of walks. They have called that game in Cleveland. That game has been postponed. The Indians were winning one nothing over the Twins. First pitch strike to Pauly. Well, I just put my iPad on. No wonder they call that thing. It's all that rain that came through here last night. That's down the course. Stay fair. It will. So Alexei in the third on the single, the long single by Canerco. Well, Pauly. Third hit of a perfect day for Paul Canerco. Three singles, a couple of walks. Probably should be leaving this one for a pinch runner, wouldn't you think? You'd think. There he goes. Alejandro Diaz. Nice round of applause, deservedly so, for our captain, Paul Canerco. So here's Quentin. Paulie giving him a chance to drive in another run. He has two of them today an RBI single and a sacrifice fly. Trying to stay inside that one. And the count nothing in two. Six thirteen and one for us. Two six and zero oh for them. Here in the rubber match of this three-game set, they took the opener five to one behind Sai Chen. Bruce Chen, evening up his career record at fifty-five and fifty-five. As down goes Quentin, one out, and here comes Reels. Alex zero for two with a sacrifice fly and a base on ball. We have stranded 10 today. We left 12 last night. 10 the night before. Ah. 
Oh and to the count. And once again a reminder make your plans to be with us here Tuesday night. First of that big three game set with Cleveland. There goes Diazza. And that pitch foul out of play. Gavin Floyd against Ubaldo Jimenez. Can't make it to the park. Game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. On Wednesday, Mark Burley against Fausto Carmona. That game over WCIU. And on Thursday, Philip Umber against Justin Masterson in that game on Comcast Sportsnet. Two down. So here's Lillibridge. He's two for four, but it was a big first inning for him. A three run homer. That made it a four nothing lead. Made things a little easier. For Johnny Dax. He just missed it. He got a cookie and just missed it. Has some severe top hand on it. Meanwhile, Soria pitches out of a first and third nobody out situation with a couple of strikeouts of Quentin and Rios and a pop up to left. There's only one place to go for the best local sports news and highlights, and that's Sportsnet Central. Every night at 6 30, 10, 10 30, and midnight, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Got a new pitcher in this one, and it is Will Omen, who's 0 2, the ERA just under 4 on for the 41st time. It was Danks for 6, Fraser for 1, Thornton for 1, and now Will Omen comes in to nail it down. Now, Cedis Escobar will lead it off. He'll be followed by Gordon and then Giovatella. Escobar 0 for 2 with a walk. Takes first pitch strike.
One and one to count. Maybe get three outs here, and then we can go into that off day in a much better fashion. Just being four back of the Tigers. And 500 at 60 and 60. And back to the field. That <laughs> went through the <laughs> facing of the Skyline Club seats. Through the lower deck. Off the Kansas City dugout onto the field. Two and two the count. Got eaten up by that hop. But he stayed right with it. And a smile on his face because he realized how close he came to bobbling that one. So here's Gordon. He is 0 for 3. And he also was hit in the foot by a pitch. Breaking ball from Jason Fraser. Takes first pitch strike. And the count went two. He gone. Two down. Ninth strikeout by Sox pitching. Banks had six. Fraser one, Thornton one, and now Omen. Because here's Giovatella. And if you're just tuning in, Johnny Danks had a no hitter through five and two thirds. He gave a four consecutive hits as they picked up their two runs. Texas already leading Oakland 3 0. That game in the bottom of the second out of the Coliseum. Angels were beaten 5 to 4 up in Canada. There's the strike. And that's low. You're just turning in just one home run in the game. That was a three run blast by Brent Lillibridge in the first inning. That was after we already scored one, so a four spot in the first. Out for your league distance. Spread out straight up. And the count two and two.
Morrell dives down the line. Flat out dive from one knee. Bounces it across and just misses him at first. Good call by Crew Chief Mike Winters. So here's Cabrera. He's one for four. That will not be a stolen base. at one. Count. Two balls and a strike. Butler on deck. Twenty-five thousand five seventeen. A lot of them on their feet. So two balls, two strikes. The Melky Cabrera. Get it? And this ball game is over. So he strikes out. Two in the inning. A good job by Will Oman as the Sox take the rubber match of this three-game set. They win it six to two, and Johnny Danks was crisp today. We had good stuff early. You could see he struck out four guys in a row. The last two in the first, the first two in the second. Control. A little bit of an issue, but he had a no hitter through five innings and then finally gave up a bad bounce single in the sixth. That's when they scored the two runs, but that was it. The bullpen, as it has done for quite some time, came on, completely shut him down. And at the end, it's two of three from a team that's really given us a whole lot of problems, the Kansas City Royals. And we pick up a game on Cleveland. We're now four games back going into that big three game set Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So make your plans to be with us here at. U.S. Cellular Field. And right now, let's check out our GMC player of the game. It is our 26-year-old Southpaw, Johnny Danks, picking up his fifth victory of the season. He is now 3-0 lifetime against Kansas City, our GMC player of the game. And right now, let's go down to field level. Sarah Kusak here in front of the White Sox dugout with Brent Lillibridge. Brent, you gave your team a nice cushion to work with with your three-run homer in that first inning. Your third homer in the last eight games. Are, are you swinging for the fences? Can you describe your uh, your mindset there at the plate? Uh, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to drive the ball, get a good pitch to hit, and uh, get us a chance to win. I, it was big. I had a couple of swings last night. I was hoping for some RBIs that would have really extended the, the game, but uh, I was able to get some runs early for John, and John pitched awesome. You're filling in there at first base and don't have much of a track record there. Made your first career start at first uh, just a week ago. What's been the biggest challenge for you? 
biggest thing is running away from the baseball. That's what I'm not used to. I'm usually after chasing after, so it's just a little bit of work in, just get comfortable over there. But uh, hopefully, as uh, Paul can get back and I can uh, do what I do usually in the outfield or something. But uh, it was a huge win, big series for us. You mentioned the outing of John Danks, uh, sparkling today. Took a no-hit bid into the sixth inning, but broke up by Billy Butler. Uh, what walk us through that? Just bad bounce on that play? Yeah, I was. You know, it was probably going to go foul, but I was trying to sneak you know, and try to glove it before it was because he was barely out of the box and it hit a, a foot spot, like a foot mark, and it just shot up. Um, you know how it is. He ended up guy getting a hit the next hit, next next at bat, but. You know, hang with him, but uh, just trying to be aggressive on it. Um, next time, we'll uh, knock it down, smother, whatever I have to do. But John pitched awesome today. All right. Congratulations, Brent. Thanks so much. Thanks. Big White Sox 6-2 win over the Royals. All right. Thank you very much. So for my partner, Steve Stone, our director, Jim Angio, our producer, Mike Leary, our associate producer, Dave Voss, our technical manager, Mark Harper, the executive producer, Jim Corno Jr., also for the mayor, Mean Joe Group. And up here in the booth, we've got Mike Mayer, Frank D'Amato, and Jeff Hilbert. This is the Hawks. So long, everybody.